Hi there. They've got all the ingredients and a hot business plan. You have to put your heart and soul into it. The business becomes you, you become the business. But do these two sisters have the recipe for success? It was the bottom of the bottom. And uh, I had to really kind of look at my life saying, I, I gotta fix this. If anybody knows about risk and reward, it's this guy. Wes Sumida was once broke, but now he operates a multi-million dollar company shipping products from Northern California across the United States. From gourmet olive oil. And then you just sip. To hip haircuts. You wanna really get to know your family. You go into business with them. We've got the men and women willing to take the risk and go for it. I think if you have passion, if you are ambitious and maybe a little bit crazy, you're probably going to be just fine. Hi, I'm Jason Schultz. What does it take to turn an entrepreneurial dream into a successful business? We'll find out on Yes, We're Open. Funding for this program is provided by... Your business has big dreams, and you need a partner who can help you reach them. SAFE has customized financial solutions plus local professional experts to help your business grow. Get a bigger business plan and change the way you bank at safecu.org. Ah, the mom and pop shop. It is hard not to root for the little guy, the person who's taken a chance in your community, whether or not it's downtown Lodi or anywhere across Northern California. And a lot of folks think the timing is right due to a renewed interest in buying local for entrepreneurs to pursue their passion. That's what Renee Green is hoping for. She's the daughter in the parent-daughter team that recently opened Jimmy's Barber Garage. Definitely tried to make it kind of like a non-corporate sort of vibe. We thought Sacramento needed a, a barber shop that was men and women both, basically a gender neutral shop. The shop's namesake, Jimmy, was Terry's father, Jimmy Green, who died in 2013. Jim Green uh, owned a pharmacy over off of Arden Way. You know, it was a small business and you know, we, we thought under his legacy pattern our business after his. Why did you want to do that? Well, we liked the way he treated his customers. You know, it's all about that. It's all about customer service. And talk about honoring him. That's as big of a well, mural as you can 12, get. 12 foot mural, my wife and I painted that and I think we worked all night on it. We started discussing all the senses and we, we asked ourselves, what can we do to enhance each one? It doesn't take long to see the biggest thing they did to enhance the vibe here. Walk or drive by, two large garage doors are opened up. We use them to bring in fresh air, take advantage of Sacramento's great climates, the, the breezes we get. We had no idea that when those doors come up, they become a magnet for bringing customers in. And when they do, customers get a sense of what this family of artists turned small business owners is going for. Art on the walls, free beer on tap. And while they're a full service salon, it's called a barber garage for a reason. Hot towels, close shaves, old school. I kind of just knew I'd been barbering for a long time for other people, and um, I finally got to a point where it was time to kind of do my own thing, I think, and um, yeah, I kind of just went from there. And how lucky do you feel to have this opportunity? Um, so lucky. So many people go through their career paths and don't, and don't, get, don't get the opportunity to, to start their own thing. And, it's really humbling to be able to go through this process. Renee manages the shop. She's a licensed barber. She's also a licensed cosmetologist, and she keeps a finger on the pulse. She has, she has all the hiring, all the interviewing. My wife handles all the inventory and the ordering on the product lines. I handle a lot of the meetings uh, with uh, getting involved in the community, the marketing aspects. The barber shop was originally an auto repair shop, but spent the last several years as a tattoo parlor. And you found this place, right? Yeah, Tell actually, me about that. I came in to get my nose pierced, and I saw the Ferenc sign out in the front, and um, I was like, wow, that's perfect. Before any scissors or clippers were put to use, tools of the construction trade were needed. And it didn't take long to find out that combining business and family has its challenges. 
I'm sure you never butt heads about anything in the business, right? <laughs> well, Ever. actually, the collage walls were a thing. Like, we definitely, there was a little bit of like, okay, like, are we going to do them? Is it too edgy? Definitely balancing out the edginess and trying to make sure it's still appealing to a wide range of people. He didn't want the collage walls. Yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> he, he likes it now, but yeah, I, I, that's something I fought for a little bit. If you want to really get to know your family, <laughs> You go into business with them and they learn a lot about you and you learn a lot about them that, that you didn't know, especially when you're under a lot of pressure and uh, you're putting your finances on the line and, and you're, you're jumping in there. It can get tense at moments. But attracting attention is not a problem for this business. They've seized on the hip vibe of their midtown location. Those wide open garage doors are inviting. Actually, I was with a client. We had this guy pull in and you roll down the window and he's like, no, we're going to get a haircut. I want a haircut. And I was like, I'm going to get hair in your car if I cut your hair out of your car. He pulled his car into Inside, the Inside, right, right behind you. Typically, a woman is getting charged how much more than a man? Usually double. Um, double. And it's, I've heard people say it's because they're willing to charge or willing to pay that, or they're getting their hair cut less, and it's like, you, you don't still think shouldn't. Fair. I don't think that's fair. I think that it's fair to charge for your time and anybody that comes in with long hair is going to take a little bit longer than somebody with short hair. In this industry, in the barbershop industry, they say that if you're making any kind of profit in six months, you're doing well. And uh, we started making a small, very small profit in month four. And it's just continued to increase since then. A profitable family business with two generations working together and one watching over. He's sort of guiding us as far as the way we want to deliver our, our business or our, our, our service to our customers. He's definitely there. I think he'd be proud. I definitely think he'd be proud. His, uh, his legacy later. carries on yeah. though, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. It's what we want to be known for. It's Jimmy's and it's like it's not so much Jimmy's Barber Garage, it's Jimmy's. So we get to hear that a lot. So hanging out at Jimmy's, that's fine. Fine with me. There are lots of risks when it comes to starting a new business, and going into business with your family is certainly one of them. Imagine having a disagreement at work, and it spills over into Thanksgiving dinner. But it can be very rewarding, and two Sacramento sisters think they are on the path to sweet success. Cleary's is an ice cream and candy store. We do soft serve ice cream, and we have 60 bins of candy, as well as nostalgic candy, lollipops, chocolates, all sorts of great things. We've become well known for our East Coast style vanilla custard. Seems to be a big hit. Um, we're also a great hangout spot, a lot of families, lots of high schoolers. It's just a happy place to be. Ice cream and candy is just a, it's a happy business. It's something that we have great childhood memories of. We still have our favorite ice cream places we like to go and, and we love to support local. I didn't want something you could just go to the grocery store and get. I wanted something that would take people back. It just had to be unique. The whole, the whole theme around Clary's is just unique. All right, strawberry sprinkles. It took us a little bit, and you know, in fairness, it's only been 13 weeks. Um, I think right now we've really figured it out. We, at the beginning, we were exhausted. We were both here, you know, 14-hour days, and two weeks in, I, I think we were both like, "There's no way we cannot maintain this." And so we found a great balance. Christine brings certain strengths. I bring my own strength, and together, I think we really complement one another. We sometimes joke that we haven't killed each other yet, so we're probably doing okay. We've learned how to work it out. We're sisters first, we promised our parents that, and when we're at work, we're business owners, for sure, but you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're family, and, and that's the most important. <laughs> My biggest concerns are, are probably actually January and March, because February is Valentine's Day, it's a great candy holiday, um, I think we can do a lot of fun things with the holidays, but we've talked about bringing in for sure new flavors. Um, we have a lot of fun ideas actually, as possibly coffee drinks, warm drinks. 
We also do birthday parties. We do big candy bars for events. And I think one thing that we're really fortunate to have is social media. There's so many outlets with social media that we can look at our sales in one day and decide we're going to do a special right now. We can tweet that out, we can put it on Facebook, and we get immediate response from that. It's not something you say, oh, I'm going to open an ice cream and candy bar, and you know, a month later, you're opening an ice cream and candy bar. It takes a lot of thought, but I think if you have passion, if you are ambitious, and maybe a little bit crazy, you're probably going to be just fine. In the right way. In the right way. Crazy okay. in the right way. Yes, we're open. Wasn't so good. You're really excited. Yes. No, you're right in my ear. Yes. I think it's safe to say all entrepreneurs have to be a little crazy in the right way. And tech business trendsetter Wes Sumita admits he took some crazy risks on his journey to success. They always ask, what's the next big thing technology? And you can't blame them. Wes Sumita is the man behind a $200 million a year electronics accessories empire. Oh my gosh, we have styluses, uh, the car chargers with the connected cable, wall chargers with the connected cable. We have cases, uh, cleaning products, little speakers. We have the earbuds have done very well for us. Despite his success, people weren't always asking Wes Sumita about technology trends. In fact, when the recession hit in 2008, we were weeks from going out of business probably. We had our best year 2006, 2007, and then the bottom just fell out of the economy, and it really hit technology big. And we laid off more than half our staff. We went down to 40 people. And even then, we barely got by. It was really tough. We kept thinking, I was always optimistic that things would turn around in the economy, and it never really did. I would walk the warehouse at night thinking out loud, what am I going to do? How do I save this? What am I doing wrong? A road trip down Highway 99 in California's Central Valley turned out to be life-changing for Wes. And we stopped at a TA Travel Center. We go into the TA Travel Center off of 99, and I saw these little car chargers that are shaped like a bullet, kind of stuck in styrofoam. And they had like a couple trays of them, and a few were missing, so it looked like they were selling. And I, I bought a couple, and I came back uh, up to uh, Sacramento. That Monday, I go into the graphics department, and we look at these things. I said, you know what? I bet we can do a better job of selling these. And I said, why don't we think about how we can improve on this? And that really is what got everything started. We said, well, let's do them in colors. Let's put them in a jar and sell them at the, the lowest price that we possibly can, which was $5. And um, we approached uh, some of our resellers. They took them on. It did very well. I remember when I first proposed it to Walgreens, they thought, well, nobody's going to buy that. But if you want, we'll try 100 of them in some stores. So we ship 102 Walgreens locations, and they just took off. And they came back and said, what else do you have? And now when Wes Sumita walks through the warehouse, he's not worrying about what he did wrong. Every week, tens of thousands of cases, styluses, chargers, they all get boxed up and shipped across the country. The products are designed right here at the e-affiliate Rancho Cordova headquarters. Mock-ups are made using 3D printers, and the products are manufactured in China. The Tech & Go brand can be found at every Walgreens in the U.S. We go to Walgreens, they say, hey, you got to try. We, we put some styluses in a jar and say, hey, you got to try these stars in, in these jars. And Walgreens said to us, you know, nobody's going to buy those sticks. They didn't even know what they were. So they put those in, again, we tested it, and uh, they ended up selling, that became the second best selling item in, in the chain. It's not just Tech & Go. The company makes and sells all kinds of accessories for mobile devices under several brand names and many colors. Dad's is blue, mom's is pink, the daughter's is purple, right? We have orange for the sun, let's say. But we, but there's like six or seven different color sets that you could buy, so you know exactly whose is whose. I think a lot of the mobile accessory products are designed by men for men, so they're kind of gray and not very interesting. They're functional, utilitarian. We said, let's add a fashion flair to it. And it turns out that that was the epiphany in the industry for us was that it's not men that buy this, it's women that buy it. So let's put them in these cool colors, let's put some pinks in there and some cool purples. And it turned out our demographic is 70% women. That is who buys our products. Adapting to a changing market and despite being down, making sure you aren't out, are lessons Wes Sumita learned in the 1980s. After selling a successful one hour photo business, but having several failed businesses after. It was the toughest time of my life. I was essentially uh, living off of credit cards. 
it was it had gotten that bad. I think I had over fifty thousand dollars in credit card debt at that point, and I had gone to uh, 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 Security Pacific on Madison. I put my card in the ATM machine at ten p.m. at night. I mean, it was kind of a rainy night. The card goes in. I hear it go all the way through the the teller machine into a bucket. <laughs> And when the credit card hit that bucket, it rang like a bell. <laughs> it was a wake-up call for me. It was so funny. And I just, I knew, I'm thinking, I'm not getting that credit card back. And then the prompt comes up on the screen. At your earliest convenience, please come into the branch. Uh, thank you for your business. <laughs> it was the bottom of the bottom. It was. And uh, I had to really kind of look at my life saying, I, I got to fix this. I was embarrassed, ashamed that I had negative net worth. I had become a burden to society. And I started buying uh, computer accessory items from a, uh, a publication back then called Computer Shopper. And I started building things I could. I borrowed, you know, I, I bought these things on a credit card, assembled computers, because I, I actually, I knew a little bit about computers, and would sell them, it would make a little bit of money. I think maybe it made all the difference in the world. I think you have to get stung with, with failure to appreciate the good times. Otherwise, you take prosperity for granted, and you never want to take things for granted. Today, Wes Sumida is looking forward to his next big thing, vending machines that sell mobile electronic accessories. Instead of chips and candy, we have things that people need while they're traveling. It's a collaborative effort. It's the, it's the affiliates fuse It's everybody who works at this company. It's a, it's a group effort that make, is going to make this a reality. Cool. I'm looking forward to seeing these out on the road. Great. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find it in hip restaurants, farmers markets, even grocery stores. It's a renewed interest in wanting to know where your food comes from. Sacramento even dubbed itself the farm to fork capital. Well, for entrepreneurs like Suzanne Lococo, it's the perfect time to capitalize on the foodie trend. Welcome to Villa Sicilia. We're going to do a private tasting today. We specialize in ultra premium extra virgin olive oil and then we have fused and infused extra virgin olive oils, essentially the flavored olive oils and then a large selection of balsamic, authentic balsamic vinegars. The very first time they come in a lot of white eyes and they're a little intimidated at first and uh, they, they are afraid to try and think that they won't know the difference and I assure them uh, that everybody has their own personal taste and the important thing to do is to taste and find the one that is the most pleasing to them. So we're actually going to warm this up in our hand before they are surprised at uh, the freshness of the oil. They're surprised at that little burn that they might feel in the back of their throat from the polyphenols. And it's really fun to watch people try that for the first time. They light up. Hi, hey, welcome Suzanne. to Bella Sicilia. Hey, thanks for having me. Great. Great. We talked about before, this is the lemon-fused uh, agrumato method of fusing the lemons with the olives, crushing them at the same time. We really like it with the raspberry balsamic. That seems to be a very popular combination. And that's what's so in here already. So I have already. just poured you some of okay. the raspberry balsamic, and we're going to give you a little bit of the lemon, extra virgin olive oil. So I'm just giving it a little spin to integrate it here so that you don't just taste one ingredient or the other. Go ahead, salute. Down the hatch. Oh, wow. Okay, Pretty it did terrific, not go huh? socks off. Yeah, that's yes. delicious. Fantastic. The lemon has this like zing that just hits you. Absolutely. Wow, mm -hmm. that is so good. I went back to school at, uh, you know, 42 years old and finally graduated from Sac State with a sociology degree and uh, tried to get a job. So, of course, you know, it started, the olive oil store became more and more appealing as uh, my job search became more and more discouraging. We opened November 23rd and we were very busy in December, I mean, for a new business. That was an instant boost to, you know, my confidence and, okay, we're doing the right thing here. It's going to go well, it's going to work. 
Um, and then January hit and we were like, oh my gosh, where'd everybody go? We're not gonna survive. And then people started coming back and uh, slowly every month we see the business growing. They're really happy to have a store like this in Sacramento. It's, it's a big farm to fork community. They're very aware of the slow food movement and um, people have just in general become more health conscious. I think I can sell whatever I really believe in and I do believe in this product. And then you just sip. Afraid of failure? Well, starting a business might not be as scary as you think. According to the Small Business Administration, about half of new businesses survive five years or more, and a third last for 10 years. Who hasn't thought about ditching the nine to five and starting your own business? Admit it, at least once in your life, you've been standing in line to check out and said to yourself, I could run this place. What separates those risk takers from the rest of us who only talk about it? Well, to find out, I enlisted the help of Michael Rossler. He's a small business and entrepreneurial consultant, helping people take an idea to reality. And what better place to meet than Cleary's Ice Cream? This looks so good. Thank you. You're welcome. You're Thank you. So it looks good. delicious. Enjoy. Thank you very Cheers. much. I've seen fantastic businesses, and I've seen businesses that uh, have never had a chance. <clears throat> Where does that small business person go wrong? It's a simple answer, the lack of capital. So they run out of money? They flat out run out of money based on lack of planning or, or lack of good planning on uh, making sure they have enough money to cover expenses that may be unforeseen. If you think it's gonna cost you uh, $100,000 to start this business, I would make sure that you had another $30,000 on hand just in case. That's pretty scary. Very. Does that scare people away once they hear that from you? No. Because they'll start whether they have $30,000 more or, or, you know, I mean, they will start it no matter what. People who start businesses like this business are very passionate about being their own boss, uh, bringing their ideas to life, uh, and seeing the outcomes. What kind of person makes a good entrepreneur? Somebody that, that, that makes a good entrepreneur is somebody that is passionate about what they want to do, and they do it for different reasons, whether they've been displaced from a, a, a past uh, employee situation, um, whether they want to put their kids through school, or whether they want some extra spending money, but they have to be passionate uh, because they're going to be here a lot. The same woman, the same guy that's uh, in charge of payroll is also cleaning the toilets, right? They're going to be here to open the door, and they're going to be here to close the door, most likely. It's their name, it's their reputation, and a lot of times, it's helping pay bills at home. A business like this, what's, what's their risk? I've heard from many, many small business owners that the hardest part about any business is when they have employees involved. Your business owner has a passion for the ice cream and the custard. The employee, it's just a job. In many cases, it's a job, and it's really up to the owners to find the employees who, who, who most of the time make minimum wage maybe more, um, to share that passion, to share that energy. There's literally a number, a, a, a number of ice creams that they have to sell per month. The owners of, of, of this establishment know how much ice cream they have to sell, they know how much candy they have to sell, then they know the margins, the profit margins of each. They have committed themselves, their families, and let's face it, the families are involved as well, to the success of this of this retail establishment. So when people walk through the door to this place, they need to feel what? If it's their first experience, it needs to feel warm, followed up by a great product. They need to be saying to themselves, man, that was a great place. I, I loved who, who served me. I love the product. I have a, a, some candy that I've never seen before that I, I purchased. I want to come back. What are your thoughts uh, you know, going forward? What are their prospects and, and what are their danger zones, would you say? Well, I think, pro I think the, the, the owners are, are fantastic. Uh, they, they have the energy. Uh, they're sisters, which is a, a, a real different dynamic. That can be a risk, right? Uh, that, that is a risk in, in most cases. So these two sisters at least need to have that on their radar screen. Yeah, they need to have the same vision for this, for this business. Uh, long-term vision plus short-term vision. What other things do you see when you think about this place? Well, I think it's visually very attractive. Um, I think it's a, uh, uh, they have tied into the youth uh, of this area, uh, which is a smart move. I think the risks involved in an ice cream shop, obviously, is the fact that it, 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 it could be seasonal. 
in a place like this, they have to pay their rent every month. So they're going to have to be smart about their business. The Cleary sisters are definitely aware of their risks to their fledging business, but they've got big dreams for ice cream and cool confidence. We just knew that we could do it. We had a solid business plan. We knew what we wanted. We were ready to go. And for us, a failure is not an option. I'm the luckiest person on the planet because I, I love what I do. I love the people that I work with. And we get to manufacture a product that is appreciated by millions of people. It doesn't get much better than that, especially where I've come from. It really is mine. And um, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's very gratifying. Just takes a little bit of you know, foresight and a little bit, a little bit of guts, and just uh, jump out there and do it. Well, there you have it. Don't be afraid. Just get out there and do it. I'm Jason Schultz. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Yes, We're Open. You can purchase a DVD or Blu-ray copy of this program. Here's the cost. To order, just visit us online or call 888-814-3923. Now I kind of feel like I need a, a nap. Do right? you have like a hammock here yeah, anywhere? Yeah, right, you should have nap time. Oh, man. Yes, we're open. Funding for this program is provided by... Your business has big dreams, and you need a partner who can help you reach them. SAFE has customized financial solutions plus local professional experts to help your business grow. Get a bigger business plan and change the way you bank at safecu.org.